These two, of course, I stayed here and just I, I prayed for a picture with Julia Roberts. Uh, she didn't make a picture to, with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Italian Wine Podcast. Chin Chin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to another Italian Wine Podcast episode of On the Road Edition, hosted by Stevie Kim. Follow her through Napoli, the traffic, the noise, and most importantly, the pizza. Join Stevie as she eats her way through southern Italy, desperately seeking the best pizza in Napoli. Today she's visiting Antica Pizzeria da Michele. Stevie sits down to speak with owner Alessandro Conduro to talk about their legendary pizza. Okay, welcome to Italian Wine Podcast on the Road Edition. Today we're in Naples and we are, of course, um, in this historic, iconic uh, pizzeria. Um, I, I guess you can say it's the best pizza in the world. Somebody say it. <laughs> <laughs> I and, cannot say. Yeah. Yeah. And we're here with one of the principals of the pizzeria. Um, Alessandro Conduro. Good is that, is that Conduro? Yes, yes, yes. Conduro. Exactly. Alessandro Conduro. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. I know at 11 o'clock um, you're supposed to open the floodgates. So It will be busy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, I've seen <laughs> yeah. it so many times on television. Yeah. Um, so, Alessandro, would you like, would you mind telling us, I know you're really, really famous, it's Antica Pizzeria <laughs> since 1870, Yeah, yeah. Since but would 18, you mind um, telling us, our audience, a small um, history about your pizzeria, when it started, and your family, etc. Yeah, of course, it's a family business, you know, uh, my great, great grandfather, Mr. Salvatore Condurro, started in 1870, to sell pizza outside from his house. He stays in Naples, he lives in Naples, and he uh, sells pizza outside from his house, fried pizza, you know? He used to do fried the, the pizza. The pizza fritta. Fritta, you yeah. know, okay, fried pizza, and to sell people over his house, outside from his house. First he started alone, and then he uh, went on with his, uh, with his first son, Michele, Michele Condurro, who learned uh, how to do pizza from his father, and then in 1904 he opened his first branch, Pizzeria da Michele, uh, after known as L'Antica Pizzeria da Michele. So then it was not Antica, now. Yes. <laughs> now so Michele really is yes. the son, was the son of. Yes, of was the son of Salvatore Condurro, yes. And Michele is my great grandfather. Okay. Uh, this family business went on with uh, my grandfather, Salvatore, you know, Salvatore Michele, Salvatore Michele, old father and son. And <laughs> then, it. you know, and so in fact, that's why my name is Alessandro, another name. Right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, with my grandfather Salvatore Condurro, and my uncles Mr. Antonio Condurro, Luigi Condurro, Raffaele, and then now we are more than 20 people, all relatives, that uh, carry on this uh, family, this family business tradition with all our passion. We all employ here. Somebody works uh, at the oven. Somebody does pizza. Uh, I take care about. Um, the external branches, the branches abroad. You know, we have uh, a new company that sells the name of Antica Pizzeria da Michele all over, all so over the world. So like, it's like a franchise yes, business? Yes, 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 franchise how many, business. How many pizzerias are there? In the now world? we have 23 branches all over the world. Yesterday wow. we opened our 23rd in Manchester, UK. And so I take care of this. Even if uh, I stay here, I stay here uh, to work here with my, with my relatives. There's my uncle here, Mr. Sergio Conduro, they take care of pizzeria. We're all Conduro, okay. <laughs> just a family. So it's, it's yeah? an extended family yes. business still. Yes, 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 of course. We, we stay here, we are the fifth generation and uh, we are very proud to carry on this tradition of our grandfather, great-grandfather. So we uh, hope that uh, this, uh, this family, this, uh, this business uh, will continue for uh, more than 100 years. So, you know, um, of course it's been famous since, you had the business since 1870, many, yes. many generations ago. Yes. But um, something happened, I believe, in 2010. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. What happened? Yes, Tell us you're what right. happened. <laughs> you're right. In 2010, we were um, uh, we were called from the production of uh, the movie. How did, how it, did that happen? Uh, they just called you one day. They call. They call my father. Okay. <laughs> they, they call my father. 
because first uh, uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Gilbert, the writer, mm -hmm. came here to eat a pizza, just to eat a pizza. We didn't know her. Right. Uh, but she... Because uh, first she, she ate, wrote the yes, book. Yes, right. yes. She ate the pizza, she fell in love with this pizza, and so she wrote the book. After this book, we were called by the production of the movie Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, with Julia Roberts, you yes, know? Yes, the then, famous yes. Julia Roberts moment. <laughs> and then Julia Roberts came here in Forcella in this restaurant right. just to eat the pizza. And it was a great day, great emotion for all of us. All Naples was blocked. Uh, all people stayed outside from this pizzeria just to take a look of Julia Roberts, just to take a picture. Me too, me too, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Me too, of course. I stayed here and just I, I prayed for a picture with Julia Roberts. Uh, she didn't make a picture to, with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, but uh, I was happy too. I was yeah. happy too, there's no problem. And since that uh, day, since that day when the, when the movie Eat, Pray, Love uh, went to the cinemas, uh, this pizzeria that was uh, already famous before, but after uh, had a great fame all over the world and was known as Julia Roberts Pizzeria. You know the pizzeria of Julia Roberts and every people, many, many people from, uh, from USA, from UK, from all around the world, they came here just to take, uh, just to eat the pizza in the same way of Julia Roberts. So uh, we have a picture of Julia Roberts that eat pizza and they all made the same, the same pose, you know? So, so, so has... I mean, you became even more popular yeah, after yeah. Julia Roberts, yeah. is it fair to thanks, say? Thanks, Julia, thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a great, great moment. Yes, Congratulations yes, yes. for that. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I do want to talk to you about, um, I love this concept of your pizzeria, of this democracy, democratic yeah. pizza, if yes. you will, right? Yes. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about the philosophy of this democracy that you, you, you are, I guess that is kind of your imprinting and your DNA and your, your personality, which is loved by everybody? Yes. I like so much these questions because um, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, who we are, <laughs> of course. Uh, it all starts from here. It all starts from Forcella. Uh, in the early 90s. Forcella is a, a, pure, a pure zone of Naples. There are many, many, many people, but they are poor people. They don't, uh, didn't have money uh, to buy food, to eat. And so they came here uh, to eat pizza just for, just for hungry, not for, uh, not for other things. They, uh, they, had to, they had to eat. Yeah, they had to feed uh, to themselves. To stay alive, you know, mm -hmm. they had to feed themselves, yes. So and, this was uh, in the 90s? Yes, in the early 90s. And so um, uh, my great-grandfather, Michele Condurro, uh, made pizza in a different way from the other pizzeria. He started to stretch the dough uh, in a great large way, you know. Uh, so they call this way of making pizza, pizza rota di carro, just like a wagon wheel pizza, you know, because the pizza is large as a wagon as a wagon wheel. You Why know? did he do that? They do that because... Uh, it seems like more the, uh, food? Yes, yes, oh. yes, of course. To give, to give the impression to the people in pizza that uh, he was eating more, more and more. And so they were so happy, the people, to, 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 to eat this pizza large this way. So many, many people came here because they think that uh, here they can eat more at the same price. Right. Uh, they cannot eat more but because the dough was the same. But they stretch, stretch in a large way to put on all the fior di latte cheese, all the tomatoes, so they can food themselves. And uh, from here started the democracy of our pizzeria. Uh, this is a pizzeria of all the people, all the classes, you know, from the king of Saudi Arabia that came here to eat pizza, uh, to, the, to the poor people, you know, everyone came here, and maybe before the COVID, you know, they can sit together in the same table. You know, here you have the, the king of Saudi Arabia, and here we have a poor people, here, we have, uh, uh, here you have uh, enormous people. Just, uh, you, uh, Everyone you know, has yes. is at equal Equal, level. equal chance, equal right. chance to eat pizza. And here, this table maybe uh, can born friendship, relationship, and maybe somebody who don't know the other people sitting on the table stand up and pay for everyone, you know? So how does it work? People come here, I saw it in the movies, like people come, 
take their number because you start yes. serving yes. at 11 o'clock. Yes. We start correct? at 11 o'clock. Every single yes. day. Every single day from 11 o'clock to midnight all day long. Right. Yes. So they come and they take a number yeah. and then they enter with the, when their numbers are called. When the number is so called. So even the they process will. is very very democratic very fast and democratic you know right. yes 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 of course that's why we make only also two kind of pizza we make only margarita and marinara we say that are the most two traditional pizza of naples you know we are traditional so margarita and marinara as the only are the only two pizza that we recognize as traditional napolitan pizza and it's a, a way to do fast to uh, to let people eat in a fast way so to uh, let people come in come in how many people do you serve a day about 1 100 1000 1500 1000 1500 people a day just like an industry you know oh my goodness <laughs> artisanal industry of pizza yes 1000 1000 half every day so um how how does But now, uh, sorry, I saw outside, I knew you were making two pizzas, yeah. Margherita and Marinara, Marinara yes. but I actually saw there were more pizzas now. Now we have... What Mar happened? <laughs> yeah. And when did this happen? No, it this is a scoop. <laughs> no, it happens that many people, they, uh, they are not the right idea, so they don't know if they want to eat Margherita or Marinara, so now we make a Marita, it's half Margherita and half a Marinara. A Marita. Yes, yes. We, uh, uh, we make these two pizzas together, half and half, and this is the third oh, pizza we sell. Okay, okay. But, but there so are also, also Margherita Marinara, oh, only Margherita Marinara. Oh, you know? okay, I didn't there understand There are a lot of derivations. Right, right. Okay, yes. that, that's fantastic. Yes. So what about during COVID? How did you cope with COVID? Uh, what, it what, was, uh, did you close down for COVID? Yes, yes, of course. We closed it last year, uh, just like all the restaurants in Italy. It was a great, uh, it was a damage for us because uh, this pizzeria, as my grandfather, as my uncle said, my uncle Antonio, we never closed, never. Also during the Second World War, when the bombs uh, stayed in Naples, uh, we were open. We mm -hmm. were open and we sell pizza to few people. It was a social, a social work, just to let people food themselves. And uh, so for this reason, they were very, uh, my uncle was very sad, was very sad because for the first time in his life, he, uh, he was forced to close the restaurant. We stayed closed for many, many months. For some months, we were open only to do takeaway delivery. We did. Uh, we wasn't able to let people sit down in our in our restaurants. Now, uh, from uh, seven, six, seven months, now we're open another time. People can people can sit here and eat the pizza. That was the best thing for us. But you're, there's now this super green pass, right? Yes. yes. So that is, that facilitates. The reopening. Yes, of right? course, of course. Uh, see, yes, the super, the, the green pass first, and now the super green pass. Of course, uh, uh, as the rule to give people the chance to sit here and eat the pizza. That's why I recommend everyone to uh, uh, to make the super green pass and to vaccinate. <laughs> what do you think the future? How do you see? What is your vision for the future? You have 23 restaurants all over the world. What is the future for Antica Pizzeria San Michele? Yes, uh, I love your questions. <laughs> Because uh, many, many people think about us as the tradition, as the story. I don't like this. So, better. I like because, of course, We were born in 1870, so we are really the tradition, the story. But many people uh, say tradition and story just to, to mean, okay, they're ancient, they're not modern. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that the future of pizza is l'antica pizzeria da Michele, because if we uh, stay alive for more than one century, we pass it two world wars, we pass it the COVID, Uh, it means that we are able to live, to live another uh, hundred and hundred of century. Uh, the modern, the, um, the modernification, I don't know, uh, of l'antica pizzeria Michele is just l'antica pizzeria Michele in the world. That's the company uh, uh, that I am, uh, I am the general manager. Uh, to open branches abroad, outside, we stay in Los Angeles, in UK, in uh, Saudi, 
So Saudi expansion, Arabia, you see it, Japan, you see the yes. to expand, big yes. expansion all over the world. The expansion of the branch L'Antica Pizzeria Michele and of the concept about L'Antica Pizzeria da Michele, two kinds of pizza, margarita, mm -hmm. marinara, tradition. And I think that, and I see every time we open a branch abroad, uh, they, that people love it. That people really, really love it. Uh, many, many people, Napolitans that live abroad, Napolitans of second, third generation that stay there also in USA. For example, when they, when they see uh, the opening of L'Antica Pizzeria Michele and they eat the pizza, they just cry because they remember when they was young and uh, maybe their relatives put them here. And so is a, is a, a name, L'Antica Pizzeria Michele, that is really loved all around the world. And so I think that uh, it will be the future. What about, have you got children? Yes, How yes, I have two children. The first is a male, he's uh, 14 years old, and the second, uh, my daughter, she's 11. So, I mean, they're still little, they're, they're yeah. still young. Yeah. But do you think they're interested in going into the uh, pizza business, the family business? I try to make my son, <laughs> <laughs> I try, but they, but they only eat pizza. They don't want to do. They don't want to work. <laughs> they only eat and they say, oh, it's good, papi, please bring me to Michele. But right, they don't right. want to work. <laughs> um, so I have one last question yeah? for you. So... I saw that you don't serve, at least here, wine. You know, I'm very wine-centric, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, how come you don't serve wine here? We don't serve wine because, uh, you know, we respect the old tradition that one uh, that doesn't want to... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not agree with this theory, of course. I'll okay. just say to you first. Uh, in fact, abroad, we uh, sell wine with pizza in the other Lantica Pizzeria. So in the other, um, the yes. franchising, yes. Yes. Um, franchises, yes. they, they, what kind of wine do you We do you have, have with the pizza, uh, we think that uh, the best wine with the pizza with Margarita is, uh, is a Gragnano from, Pen from Penisola Sorrentina. Okay, so you, you do have a food and wine yes. matching. Yes, yes. And with the yes, yes. And with the fried pizza, we sell Sasprino from Caserta near Raversa. Ah, from Caserta. Yes, sparkled. Mm -hmm. uh, just like uh, we think that is better with the pizza, that is good with the to, pizza. To cut yes. the fat. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I like it so much. I like wine. Why can't pizza. you sell wine here? Because uh, there's nobody, no tradition. No, nobody started. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, Always do this way, always do this way. This is uh, just like a museum, you know, so uh, things doesn't have to change, don't have to change. It's and like so, a destination. Yeah, yes, you know, a monument, okay? Right, right. So uh, nobody in the ancient time uh, uh, sell wine here, and so they carry on not to sell wine here. I don't, I think that maybe one day we can do that. Okay, I, I will, I'm, no I'm here to help you And do you that. will come, and you <laughs> yes. will come, of course. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much, Alessandro, You're welcome. for Thank having you. us. And um, we're, we're, this is live from, of course, Antica Pizzeria da Michele. And with, Thank you so with much. With Alessandro Conduro. All right, so let's have this pizza. Of course. Let's Thank taste some so. pizza now. Thank you so much for coming here. Greetings to all people watching this video. And uh, now we can eat our pizza. Yes, exactly. Okay. Pizza time. And that's a wrap for this episode of How to Pizza, Naples edition with Stevie Kim. Join us again next time as she explores another great pizzeria, desperately seeking the best pizza in Napoli. And remember, if you want to see more great videos like these, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of more content when it comes out. We have even more content on our podcast. Just go to www.italianwinepodcast.com. Until next time, chin chin.